is every friend, every woman a friend? Sometimes you're friends with people for the wrong reason, just like people are marrying for the wrong reason. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Who Do You Think You Are? My name is Elizabeth Oshaw. I'm the founder and CEO of So Me Solutions Public Relations Firm. In this episode, we are taking a deep dive to talk about mentorship. Everyone feels like they can handpick a mentor, but it's not that simple. I personally grew into the relationship that I have with my mentor and it was organic. It was something that we fell into. But I want to talk you through and we want to discuss how you can get a mentor, what should be expected of mentorship, and everything in between. My guest today is my wonderful mentor, Mrs. Bola Balogun. She is the CEO and founder of Glam Brand Agency, public relations firm. Yes, we do the same thing, but we've managed to have the most solid and the most respectful bond as mentor, as mentor and mentee for over 10 years now. Join me as we get into the mentorship conversation. Um, Mrs. B, can we just take it back into how we met each other and how I feel like you have picked me. I don't know. Did you mm -hmm. have picked me? What made me the one? Because everybody is always on Instagram, even now that I'm nearly 40, people are like, can you be my mentor? Can you be, I don't have anyone that I, you know, actively or have chosen yet to mentor, but how did our relationship form and why did you pick me? Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> So thank you so much. I'm so happy for you, Liz, with everything that you're doing. And you're always someone that follows your dreams. So this is quite powerful. I remember when you spoke about this book and, you know, people speak about things, but Liz is a doer. So I'll get back to that later. So, um, you know, okay. So we met at Genevieve magazine. So Liz was the editor of Genevieve magazine back in 2012. Yep. So interesting enough. I was the fashion editor at Genevieve 10 years prior. So it's so interesting that she was basically doing the job I was doing in 2000. No, that was 2006 or seven that I was um, the fashion editor at um, Genevieve magazine with Mrs. Betsy Rabo. Um, So we met, um, I was running my PR agency. She was working there, but I think what stood out to me was Liz was hardworking. Liz was focused and that reminded me very much of myself when I was, you know, similar age doing, you know, similar work. So I think that was just a natural attraction. And also we were just similar in a lot of ways, but we're also different in a lot of ways. So Liz was very expressive and I kind of see Liz, like I said, you were just like a younger version of me. So I think, and, and a little bit more scattered, but okay. a little bit more scattered. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a younger version of me. And I'm also a big believer in how we all need some sort of assistant. We all need some sort of guidance. And I'm somebody that's always had that in my life. So I think that when I met Liz, she was so perfect, but I felt like there were some things that I can suggest to her. And if you know me with or without your permission, I'm going to tell you what I think or how, you know, you can do certain things better. And I think instantly when we met, I would say one or two things and I realized that she would gravitate towards it because she's somebody that wants to be better. She's somebody that wants to go the next level. So it's easy for us to sort of communicate, for us to talk. So I think it was just natural. So you were open. So I was open to help you, um, you know, add value or suggest something to you. And you were open to take it because you knew where you were going. So I think that that's why it was so natural for us because you were quite open. Okay. So what sort of mentee would you not take? Let me ask you that. Okay. Would you not have taken on? Okay. I mean, like I said, for me, I don't even like the whole word of mentor, mentee. I just, I mean, I don't really, you know, I don't really like, I don't look at it in that way. But I think, like I said, you're similar to me. So, I mean, you, 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 like I said, you're hardworking, you're focused, you had a vision for yourself. So preferably, I sort of like people like that. I love when I see a young woman that is a go-getter. So those were the things that I saw in Liz. And then I just saw that there's one or two things that I can add to sort of take it to the next level. But Liz herself had a clear vision of where she wanted to go and what she wanted to do. So I think like, like you know, like I keep saying, we were very similar. 
So I think that that was just the initial attraction and also the way I sort of see you as a person and where you are going in the future and sort of the added value that I can add to sort of, you know, moving you forward in all different aspects of your life. So rule one, kindred spirits move together. Choose somebody that's similar to you on both parties. Yeah. You'd say you're not my mentor, but you have guided me over the last, you know, um, 15 to 12 to 15 years on so many different aspects of my life. You were at my wedding. Um, you were there through my fertility journey. You were there through any marriage crisis that I had. You know, you were there through when I set up So Me because I set up my PR firm way, you know, into um, our relationship. You knew me as an editor. So I wanted to find out from you just how important you feel it is in life's journey for a woman and even young men to have someone holding their hands. I remember when we first started our relationship, you talked about this big sister program and how that forged and formed how you show up in life. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, like I said, I'm someone that believe in, like you said mentoring, but I would say some sort of guidance in different, you know, at different ages, at different seasons in, in, your, in our lives. So for me, I've always been mentored. So I started getting mentored as young as 10 years old. Um, I was in a, in a program when I was younger in America called Big Sister and Big Brother Program of America. And then I had, a, you know, I had a mentor. And also my parents were very deliberate, which the same way I am with my children, that I had mentors. I mean, obviously my parents are years older than me. I have siblings, but they were very interested in sort of having younger women similar to my own age guiding me through life so i think that i was formatted in that way because i'm just a believer that we all need some sort of guidance we need some sort of assistance especially obviously in a positive way because we can't figure out everything by ourselves there's some people that have walked ahead of us there's some people that we're going to stand on their shoulders and i just think that it's something that is very important that you're not supposed to know everything you know, and I'm somebody that I'm always asking questions. I always want to be a better version of myself. So even at this age, I have several um, mentors that I look up to in different, different ways that I speak to authentically, you know, about whatever issues is going or even some of the advice. So for me, it's just something that is very, very important. And for me, I understand that the same for men, but I think it's even more crucial for women to, you know, have a sisterhood or to have mentors or people because so much things happen in our life that like I said, we're gonna need some sort of guidance to sort of go through it or to even understand it. So you know when to be patient, when to lay back and everything. When I look at your life, I'm just in awe of how you navigate everything, how you're a very successful entrepreneur that owns one of the top PR firms in Africa, arguably working with amazing brands, you know, from Lancome to Mac to YSL to Maybelline, so many different projects that you've even brought me on board and you've collaborated with me on. Um, you are a mother of five. You have five children. Yes, she doesn't look it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a wonderful, wonderful marriage. Um, so much so that even my husband um, is now mentored by your husband. Um, how are you a mentor to your four girls and one boy? Oh, wow. Um, I think I was born to be a mother. So, um, for, for our children, I have to be a mentor to them. Also, I'm their mom. So I feel like with children in different ages, they, they need different things. So maybe at a younger age is nurturing. Some other age is, um, guidance. Some other age is support. So I think different, different times, children need different things. So for me, that's just the way that I see it. I'm a giver. Like I believe that in life, you know, we have a purpose. And for me, I've concluded that my purpose is to, you know, assist people. Um, there's something I always say, no matter what happens in, in, in my life or in anybody's life, I will never be somebody that adds sorrow to your life. Like at best I added value, but I'm not gonna be somebody that is going to cause anybody any problems like if you know me very well and you have to deal with me is that you have to see me as somebody that is an added value so for me it's just a big deal and you know the same thing that i extend to my four daughters and to my son is you know to teach them 
sort of similar. So even my kids mentor other kids that are, um, you know, younger than them, because I just think that it's a big deal for us to share knowledge, for us to share vulnerability, for us to share success, for us to share pain, for us to just share. I just think that it's very, very important. So sisterhood friendship is a big, big deal to me. How, how do you find the time? How do you balance five children, work, marriage? You have a very solid girl group, click, friends. I, I'm sure you hate the word click, but there's a, there's a girl group that you guys are very famous in the fashion world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you manage and balance it all? And still have time for me. Yes. <laughs> um, I think, you know, for me, wherever I'm needed, I think that I... I will show up and that's what it is. So I think whenever I'm needed, I'm show up. If I'm needed for my kids, I'm there. If I'm needed for my friends, I'm there. If I'm needed for my ment mentees, I'm there. If I'm needed for my husband, I'm there. So I'm just, I feel like I'm, I have a lot of emotional intelligence and I'm also very like connected to people. So for me, it's easy. I mean, I don't really, I mean, I think, you know, you know me very well. So there's a particular way that I live my life. So I don't, overdo anything so everything it's like everything is thought through everything is what it is and i'm always available once you are important in my life don't worry i know what my priorities are i know who my priorities are anything outside of those things that are important to me those are the things that i don't really attend to but everything that is important everybody that is important to me you will know that you're important to me you know that's beautiful very beautiful. Um, Cause I mean, I remember times where I would, my husband had moved, he moved to America before I did. And you know, he would come back and you would take me out, your husband as well. You would take us out. We would pray together, especially in our waiting season. Um, it's funny that we were in PR together. How do you feel we have been able to, number one, no competition, we share resources, we share you strategy, know, strategy plans. plans, you tell me what you need, we share influencers. If there's somebody, uh, you will tell me, if there's a new videographer that's booming, yeah. we how, how do you feel our story has been different? I mean, I think, for me, I don't, I've never really believed in competition. And I think I'm very um, confident in sort of um, what I do and what I'm good at the same way that you're very confident in what you do. And I think that what, what I realize is that we're always adding value. So for me, it's about the value that you're adding. Sometimes I can do a strategy and you can like, oh, Miss B, you could have used that person. Oh, this is happening in TikTok. So for me, it's added value. Like once I meet somebody and I see you as an added value, I'm bringing you into my team, you know? I'm bringing you into my team. So that's just the way that I, you know, when we met and we're even though we do the same, we're in the same industry. People always ask that question all the time, but it never really, I've never really thought about it sort of in that way because we work together, we share resources. We, at times we have even um, shared employees. So, you know, so I think we share everything. So it's, for me, it's not really, I, I, I don't know. I've never I, really I feel like our it. story is unique. I'm not sure that that's how the world is. Is I don't know. I don't think. I mean, because outside of yourself, I'm also close with other people within the same sort of industry. So I think that for me personally, I'm, I'm always about collaboration. I've, I've always think that we are better as a team. That is just the way that I think. And each even people in my own industry, they've added value to me. They have asked certain questions I didn't know. I've, you know, you've told me about influences I didn't know. So for me, I see it more as a benefit than a non-benefit. So for me, I'm always looking to win. So whoever is in my team that is gonna help me win, that is where I stay. And it's interesting because, you know, the last thing that I picked up from what you said that has stuck with me is this position of value that one must come from. Yeah. A lot of people feel like, you know, as a mentee, you're here to take. They're going to give you all their resources. They're going to give you everything they know in their brain, you know, and they're going to be the ones teaching. Sometimes I think that that can be overbearing for, 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 for someone that feels like they're in a position to maybe help you or even guide you. What do you want to say to that, to somebody that's out here listening to this and is thinking, I want a mentor but I, 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 haven't, I haven't been able to find one. And whether 
it is important the importance of coming from a place of value yeah um i think you know earlier we were discussing i think you know even when you're looking for a mentor what are you looking for i think that sometimes people look for people that they assume or perceived to be a particular way i feel like when it comes to mentorship even some mentees really don't know what they're looking for so i think that some people are picking people that they perceive are successful in their business they perceive um maybe they can connect them and they go in they go in and see yes, it's a completely they, different story exactly <laughs> so i think also part of it is you know i keep saying this word authenticity i think that when you are a natural person where you're an authentic person the universe just connects you to people very similar to you so um i think that for a lot of mentees i think you, you should have an idea what you're looking for and sometimes for a true mentor i think you have to get to know each other naturally to understand to see how you guys can work i can't imagine just seeing somebody because this is a top businesswoman and you just think that you can just instantly connect I think you're going to have to have some sort of friendship, some sort of back and forth, some sort of just to make sure because this, I mean, the way I see it is like, you're like, you're a sister to me, you know, you're like a sister. You, you know, if, if I say that you're my mentee, that means we're together for the rest of our lives. You know, that means that I'm there for you completely, not just in one way, not just only your career when it comes to strategy, but anytime that you need some a shoulder to stand on, anytime you need any pep talk, anytime when you need sponsorship, because sometimes mentorship is not just encouraging you, but sometimes I need a lead. I need you to introduce me to somebody. I need a different idea in a in a business. So I, I feel like, you know, there's different aspects to it. And I think that one of the greatest thing between me and you, even th our relationship has changed, you know, so our relationship has changed. So there's a point. I mean, there are things that I have called you for that you have come to assist me on. There's jobs that you have introduced me to. There are clients that you have introduced me to or there are things that you have opened my eyes to, to add to my own business. So you can imagine that even though 13 years ago, you could have been in a particular position, but today you're in another position. So I also believe that with mentorship, everybody grows in different, different ways. So you grow, you, you have grown, you're now a mom. So there's some parenting tips that I'm telling you. You're now what, 10 years married? Now? It will be 10 years together this year, nine years married. Okay, so nine years <laughs> married. So you can imagine that that is um, also different. Um, we, we speak about friendship. We speak about everything. So I feel like as a mentor, it's, it's a person that you're going to be with for the rest of your life. So it's almost like a marriage. So I think that, you know, you know, what is the purpose of it? So even with the mentorship, everybody has to look. I have to be serious with you. In life, everything is, there's no give and take. It's like it has to be beneficial to you so i believe that in every relationship there has to be some sort of benefit that benefit does not mean monetary sometimes it can be um a spiritual benefit sometimes it's a physical benefit sometimes just a feel good benefit that you're getting but there's something that you're getting from each other which is how the relationship will continue and then when both people are also growing I think is important and i think one of the things that i would want to say about liz is that she listens well so i think that is one of the key things is that she actually believes in my thoughts she believes in you know my decisions so i think that within itself is also quite powerful because you know when somebody truly believe in you you also want to do the best for them you know so I think that I always appreciate you for that. So that's another reason why I also like being your mentor because you actually, you know, believe in the wisdom because, you know, people of your generation is a little bit different from my generation. I was so. going to get into that, you know, yeah. and it's funny how you started this conversation saying, I don't believe in mentorship, but you have used the word mentor. So yeah. you have been agreed hey, that well, you're, you're my, my mentor. Sister. Okay, I'm your sister mentee. <laughs> I'm your sister mentee. But I wanted to ask you, about your mentorship style. You know, I feel like sometimes, especially with this generation, you know, talking about the Gen Z's, everybody's on this, my mental health thing, you know, everybody's on this. She spoke to me one way. You can't talk to me. You can't call me out. 
What do you think is your mentorship style? I don't think many people would cope, you know? Um, and what do you think that, yeah, people should be aware of in terms of conversations and how they should approach what they're getting from their mentor? Right. So, you know, I said something earlier where I said that um, at times we, you know, you click with who you click with. You know, it's just like with my children, you know? So what's my mentorship style? I'm a truth teller. So I'm somebody that you cannot, if, if you don't want the truth, don't ask me. Like, I am going to tell you exactly what I think. And for me, I believe at this point, you know that I have your best interest at heart. So you have to know that anything I say or do is coming from a place of love. And you know, sometimes love is tough. Sometimes you have to give tough love. And I'm someone that I'm very comfortable in giving tough love because, you know, because I prefer to tell you the truth instead of you to find out elsewhere, you know? So for me, because I'm just a straightforward person, I'm a straight shooter, that is just my um, style. And I think that you are sort of similar. That is the reason why we can sort of get on with it. The same thing with my children is that I can, I can be my authentic self in dealing with them. Obviously, I'm a caring person. I'm a loving person. I'm someone that you can speak with. I'm somebody that's, I'm not judgmental. So definitely, I'm, I'm an easy person to speak with. But if there is something that I think that you are not seeing clearly, if there is something, I think this is a bad decision, I am going to let you know. So that is my own style is that I'm a straight shooter, even though I'm very loving, I'm kind, I'm soft. But, but if there's something that I think is going to hurt you or something that I think is not going to be beneficial to you, I am going, I'm going to be gung ho about it. Like I am going to put my foot down about that thing. So there's no Kona Kona with me. Which you have done with me. Um, yeah a few times <laughs> actually yeah. and called me i don't think i remember with my husband you said to me liz you know what this guy's not a bad guy you know and i have to come to his defense and say this is where you stepped and i feel like you know even if at times i was trying to for me my my defense will always be to defend myself you know so i'm telling you all what why i've moved this way i'm telling you, and you're still insisting on what you're assisting you know for the gen z who then bring mental health into play in everything that doesn't you know doesn't align with them what do you what do you what do you have to say about that? i mean obviously i'm a mother of five gen z children so i think that um i i know them very well <laughs> but i think that um with that generation i think there's a lot of love support i think that if someone genuinely know that you love them you're kind to them you want their best interest and along the way you've treated them with respect so i think that there's a big part of this thing that is respect i think that when the tough get going if you have to be a little bit tough i think people get it i think where it gets confusing is that maybe along the way you're a little too harsh you're a little bit too aggressive you're not listening so i think those are the issues so i think that this generation wants to be heard want to be respected so i think those two things are there and also for me i'm someone that i express my opinion remember for me this is my opinion. You don't necessarily have to take my opinion. That's not a very Nigerian thing. Nigerians don't expect you to be able to express your opinions or their children don't talk back. Do you allow your children to express their opinions? Yes. I mean, my kids are extremely respectful. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a serious parent. So you can't, I mean, talk back. Uh, that's actually disrespectful. But I think that you can express your opinion and you can express yourself in so many different ways. And I don't have a problem with that, but you're not going to disrespect me. I mean, that's a no, no. So, yeah. So I think that you can express yourself without being aggressive. You can express yourself without being disrespectful. And I think that even as parents or even as a mentor and mentee, I actually respect you. So if you think about it, I wouldn't just talk to you anyhow. I just wouldn't do anything. So I think that you also, you know, that is the way that you would speak to me because I don't, you know, I respect myself. So I think when you said it's a non-Nigerian way, I'm not really sure. Is it a Nigerian way? But I think that everybody deserves respect. No matter who it is, a seven-year-old, a 80-year-old, you need to respect them. But respect does not mean I'm now going to allow you to do stupidity. 
Respect does not mean that you can just do anything at any given time. Of course not. That is no. So yeah, so my kids can express themselves and they're quite expressive, but they're also extremely, extremely respectful, which is a big deal to me. So now that I'm getting into my 40s, you know, and people are coming to me to say, mentor me, mentor me. I haven't agreed yet because <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still figuring my own life out. You know, I'm still I'm still figuring things out. I'm and still I'm figuring getting my into, own life out. Um, so it's not like I know. So we've been together since, what, 13 or 14 years. I have other people that I still go to to um discuss um i have friends that we i still go to discuss. that's what i was gonna ask yes, what I advice think... do you have for me in terms of how i'm approaching this give back mentorship guidance well for me it's funny that you're saying that oh i'm not taking on mentor. i know so many people <laughs> that you have guided them along the way they've called you even the other day we had your surprise party and everybody at the table was basically <laughs> saying That's how true. you have guided them you have helped them you you know basically you mentored I, them that's it right yeah it's i think similar to me i don't want to sort of um, look at it as mentorship yeah, i don't want to look at it i just want to look at it as a dear friend that is available that is not judgmental and that is going to sort of tell you the truth and is going to use like wisdom from their own life and you know from things they did right to things they didn't do quite well and you know that they're going to use that to sort of teach you or to sort of guide you so um yeah so i think that even though you're saying you don't have any mentors i think you do actually maybe so i guess I we're similar maybe i do the apple doesn't fall far so i remember there was a point where you know just before i got married there was that crossroad where um i was seeing all the baddies online you know everybody doing what they gotta do to survive and it seemed like it was an option you know um but i decided to go the path less traveled which is you know what um i'm gonna work um i'm not going to be out here <laughs> on the streets relying on whatever or whoever um and i'm gonna put in the work i'll set up my business it was tough not only that um my choice of a husband my husband is um, a good looking chap working hard but i did not marry otedola or teda or tedala's son you know i didn't marry otedola or tedala's son and i knew that we were going to have to grow together i knew that we we're going to have to work together um what do you have to say in terms of that because i know part of what kind of guided my decisions and the um path that i traveled was watching that you also you grew with your husband you know and all of that journey yeah I think, you know, I think values is a big deal. And I think sometimes it's something that we're losing. You know, like I said, when I met you, you were a young woman, you're hardworking, you had a vision for yourself. So why go in a particular direction? I think that, yes, I mean, this could sound controversial, but I think that, you know, for some women, maybe they don't have choices. Maybe they're not smart enough. Maybe they can't work hard enough. But in your own case, I know that you had all those things where you can work hard so why should you go in a situation where you're dating men because of money when you're a woman and you can make money yourself so why don't you look for a love that is respected a love that you can grow together a love that you can work together and also because you're a woman and you yourself you can work hard so there's nothing any man can buy you that you can't buy yourself. I'm sure as you're sitting here, if you want Birkin bag, ah, you can this get me. This is me. We are not there yet. So. Uh, uh, I know your house is in America now. I know how you are living. We are not so. there yet. So, uh. But no, I mean, it's, 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 it's real. And I feel like, you know, social media as well plays yeah. a part now where everybody is seeing Birkins and we're not sure how people are getting these things. And I can imagine the amount of pressure that puts on a young woman. Yeah, I mean, I think that for a lot of young women, you should think that I want to sleep well at night. And you know, there's dignity in hard work. Like there's a dignity when you can do for yourself, when you've created for yourself. Of course, it's beautiful for, for a man to support you, a man to give to you. I mean, all these things are nice, but at what cost? So I think that that is it, at what cost? So once it is a cost that is, um, you know, your reputation is at stake. Your mental health is at stake. Um, someone's wife is chasing you. <laughs> so, you know, so the whole messy. Thing is messy. So, at what cost? <laughs> so, I think that for me, 
I think that, you know, part of being a woman is owning your power. I think part of being a woman is like owning your space and, you know, just sort of, you know, putting in the work because I think that that is how you can sit up and stand up and you can speak anywhere and say that I help myself get here. I work between um, your with, favorite saying, with, 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 Moshe Shed Moshe Debeni. Yes, <laughs> with the support of God, I got here. With the support of my husband, I got here. You know? So I think that it's very important for every young lady out there to know that they have the potential, they have the power, and it's a power that we have to lean into. So you cannot just believe that your only way out is with a man. We need to stop that stereotype, you know? And women just need to continue to do the work. And I always love when I see young women that are doing those work. I mean, you're beautiful. I can imagine in the Lagos setting, so many big, big men, MD or whatever. But you chose the right path. And guess what? The right path is the sustainable path. You know, is the is the is is it's just is the right path. And I'm so happy that you know I was able to guide you through that because for me that's something that's a value that is important to me that is a value that i live by and that is a value that i'm so happy that you as a young woman have lived by and continue to live by thank you thank you i mean these are one of the perks of having you in my corner and having a mentor i wanted to also just touch briefly on the fact that there might be someone watching this listening to this that's thinking well you know i don't have a mentor um and my circumstances in life um, means, because uh, people like to just kind of say, well, I have no other choice. I have no other choice. I don't have job. What do you say to somebody like that? I don't have work at the moment. Nothing's working. Entrepreneurship isn't for me. It's not working out. What do you want me to do? Okay. I think that the first thing is you need prayers. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no. so I think obviously you need to um, pray about it. But I think sometimes, like I said earlier, what is a mentor? Sometimes people believe that a mentor is this super rich person, somebody that is unattainable, somebody that's achieved everything in their life. This person that we're saying, your mentor could be that lady at church. Your mentor could be that lady that is working somewhere. So sometimes just looking for somebody that you sort of respect them, you sort of see them putting in the hard work or you see them doing certain things. And you know, for some people, maybe you can start here and eventually build up to a different type of mentor. But one thing I keep saying is that I don't believe that we were born to live our lives alone. So I think one way or another, we have to look for, you know, there's one that is our um, family, then there's a sisterhood, you know, which I keep saying that I feel like for women is very important because we're going to need these guidance. We're going to come to certain parts in our lives that we need other people to intervene for us. So I think that it's just important that it's something that we sort of seek, I think is very important. And, you know, I keep saying it over and over that it's very important because as you can, I mean, just imagine your life without some of the guidance that, you know, I've had or certain conversations or decisions that you just wanted to run by me you know that would be very difficult it would be yeah this is a controversial topic but i want to talk about friendships okay you know because you um are my friend um a sister um and there's this whole thing about women supporting women what do you think of it um and i know i know you always say i've stood on the shoulders of so many different women but is every friend every woman a friend i mean again there's this thing that i keep saying where i think is a natural connection i think is an authentic connection and i think that what is their purpose because sometimes i think with friendship sometimes you're friends with people for the wrong reason just like people are marrying for the wrong reasons so i think that we all need to be authentic to ourselves some people are friends with people because they're popular on social media because maybe they're a celebrity. Maybe they think they can add value to their business. Maybe they're going there because they want connection from them. So there's a reason. Or are you friends with this woman because you actually have the same value? You have the same virtue. There's certain things about this woman that you appreciate and you want to learn from. So I think that for me with friendship is that what really connects us, it has to be authentic because it is something that needs to be sustainable. You know, so I feel like for sustainable friendship, it has to be real. It has to be natural. 
And again, it has to add value. Like, why are we friends? You see, there's something I keep saying in a marriage, in a friendship, in a mentorship. What is the purpose? What is the vision? Like, you know, you cannot be my, like, why are we friends? You know, what value are you adding to me? What value are you adding? You know, what value am I adding to you? So I think that in friendship, it is very important. So when we say women supporting women, for me, that is my MO. That's the only thing that I believe in. But again, like anything in life, I think there's some men that are, you know, badly behaved. I think there's some women that are badly behaved. So I think friendship, you know, is what it is. But I think that women friendship is like, it is so powerful. I tell you all the time, I don't know where I would be without my friends. Like, I feel like my friends have added so much value to me. It is like a safe space. It is a space to share so much. So for me, um, you know, I believe heavily in um, sisterhood, you know, and, and, and whenever I hear women that don't have those sisterhood, I actually feel bad for them because that sisterhood is so powerful. These women have helped through, you know, your best days, your worst days, days that you just need some encouragement, some boosting, you know, just days that you just need girls to be hyping you up, you know? So for me, sisterhood is so powerful, but of course, I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, bad friendships everywhere, but for me, I think it's something that I cultivate. You know, I have four daughters. It's something that I've also got them to cultivate. So even though they're young, I mean, I mean, not so young, my oldest is 21. And, you know, she has powerful sisterhood. Like my daughters, they have powerful sisterhood. So um, for me, it is like, it is an added power. You instilled that into them. Yeah. You know, and you guided me so well through the peaks and troughs of marriage because marriage is, mm. is not easy. Why do you think that a lot of marriages, especially in Nigeria here and even beyond, do not survive? I think it's going to go back to something I keep saying, because if you notice, there's certain words I just keep repeating. You know, I've always said that for me, for a marriage, what is the purpose and the vision of this marriage? Because what happens in any marriage is that anything can happen at any given time. But when we have our priorities, when we have our vision, we would always go back to that. But I think what is happening is that people are marrying for all sorts of reasons. Hmm. People are marrying because, oh, I'm at the age to get married. People are marrying because this guy proposed to me. Um, people are marrying because this person has money. People are marrying because they want to get out of their parents' house. People are marrying because everybody's on Bella Niger wedding. <laughs> people are marrying. So people are marrying for all sorts of reasons, except for those one reason. <laughs> what that is, is the important. one reason? I think that is love. I think is purpose. I think is friendship. I think is loyalty. I think is kindness. I think is all those characteristics that actually really matters. But nowadays, you know, because of the way the world is, we're missing those things. And then I also believe that even sometimes when we start with those things, along the way, we lose our way. So we also see that just because of the world we're living in, and the truth is that the world where we're living in now is a, self, a very selfish world. So it's a world that, you know, you know, I'm my own person. I can do me. I don't need a man. I don't need this woman. I can accomplish this. I can accomplish what, which is technically true. But even if you understand the biblical purpose of marriage, I mean, I don't want to go there, but even when you understand the biblical um purpose of marriage even if you if you understand the added value of marriage to a man and to a woman more people it would be something that we would stay in but the world that we're living is a fast world you know and people just don't care about so many things um anymore and it's sad you know it's sad you know and i'm happy that i was able to guide you through you know some of your own rocky starts and we thank god that you know you're in a wonderful beautiful marriage today we thank god <laughs> what is next for you because i know that there's a couple of books i know that you're there's a couple of productions you're a producer um and i know that there's some ivy league children that will be unleashed into the world all your all her kids are superstars guys they're all in ivy league schools and so i know that the next phase for me is to get her to teach me how to get my son into an ivy league school um but what's next what's next um, I think um, continue to work 
and um, you know, do what we do as far as PR is concerned. But I think that I'm moving more to a, some sort of impact. So like a bigger impact, human impact. Um, I'm not really sure in what direction, but I think um, sort of um, teaching. I think um, I've always been a teacher, but I've never been a teacher. So it's something that um, I'm just sort of trying to figure out what is the best way to um, sort of go about that. But I think just impact and just, you know, touching people's lives and um, just adding value, you know, I to wherever um, I find myself or whatever situation I find myself. So I think that that's what I'm looking for. We're back to the word value. And when you come from a place of value, I think the world will open up to you and you will have abundance. Thank you so much for being my mentor. Thank you, Thank you for holding my hand, guiding me um, through my friendships, through entrepreneurship, because it's tough out here as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. <laughs> through motherhood, um, through marriage, you know, um, and everything in between. Thank you for being a sister. Um, I'm grateful for you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, the same thing for me. Um, you know, I, I always say that I'm so happy that you came into my life. I'm so happy that not in just to, into my life, but into the lives of my children. So she's a mentor to my children. So she came into the life of my children, into the life of my um, family. And even for you, you know, to the life of your children, your husband, your mother. Um, you have given me so many younger sisters, a lot of your friends. Um, you know, I've become close to them. So um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to see you sort of evolve. And I believe that this is just the beginning. I think that this is just the beginning. And something I always tell you is that, you know, you was a born star, you know? Wow, yes, yeah, so you was a born star. And it's just really great to sort of see you continue to shine, continue to be like, a, you know, like it's like a different version of you, like every three years. Mm -hmm. Like, it is just great to just watch that and to even sort of add value to that, to sort of guide that, I think is powerful. And you know, you're fearless. So even this whole thing that we're doing now, I remember when you discussed it and within six months, you're like, oh, Miss B, I've already finished the book. I'm like, oh, really? I'm coming to Nigeria to produce this. Like, oh, wow. So so I also appreciate that, that, you know, you're a doer. And even though you, I'm your mentor, you actually push me in some things. So there's certain things that you're like, oh, you should do this. You should do it like this, like certain projects. Or sometimes you ask, oh, what's going on with this project? I'm like, mm, I'm just tired. I don't know, Miss B, you have to do this project. So I also appreciate you for that. And I'm really, really, you know, happy to be here today. And hopefully... Um, the audience was able to gain something from this conversation, take some sort of nugget out of it. And I think that at the end of the day, it's just about like an authentic friendship. You know, I think it's an authentic friendship. I think it's about extending yourself to other people. I think sometimes in life, we, we all get busy. You know, we all can just focus just on ourselves. But I think it's quite powerful when we extend ourselves a little bit just to somebody else. And I think that that's what I would ask everybody out there that, you know, you don't have to be a CEO of a company to mentor somebody. Like no matter where you are, there is somebody that you can add value to that person. So it doesn't matter where you are. So I think sometimes people think that, oh, you have to get yourself together to you have be to be a, a mentor. Tony Lumelu. Yeah, that you have to be. I would be nice. But uh, <laughs> that you have to be. But in actual sense, I think that you can be in any stage of your life. But the thing is that you have to have the heart to give. So I think you have to have the heart to give. You have to have the time to give. And I think those are the two things. And once you can do that, you could just see doors open for you. You know, different doors will open for you when you give other people. Give is never lack. You give us never lack. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you. There you have it. Everything about mentorship and the stuff in between. It is Who Do You Think You Are? The book is out. And each of these episodes is to connect you back to the book. I'm glad that you guys have seen my mentor. You've heard from her on our relationship. Now, who do you think you are? And who's your mentor?